Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews. Hello, I'm Phil Blizzard in Dubai. Welcome along to this Travel Wise podcast. This is a bit of a special one because this is an interview focused podcast, and my special guest is Ryan Powell, an adventure and TV host. He's going to be talking to us about his global adventures whilst producing shows for, well, TV platforms like Amazon, BBC Earth, and the Discovery Channel. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews. Well, on the show today, I have a super, super guest, Ryan Parler, who's an adventurer, TV presenter, producer, host, speaker, been all over the uh, over the globe on very adventurous, bizarre uh, treks and all sorts of things. So let's find out. Ryan, I, I said you've uh, been all over the world, so uh, give us some indication of where you've been and what you've been doing. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I make adventure television shows, and I get to kind of travel the world and climb mountains and walk across deserts for people like... BBC, Discovery Channel, Amazon Prime, and the such. So while I am a Dubai resident, uh, I am a frequent traveler and not around often. Yeah, so for uh, BBC Earth, you were doing the extreme treks and uh, some pretty uh, epic treks indeed, to say the least. So what sort of places did you get to for those uh, extreme treks? Well, we walked across the Taklamakan Desert in western China. That was like 120 kilometers right across this really remote desert. And we had a camel caravan of like 16 camels and three camel drivers. We also climbed Aconcagua as part of the show, which is 7,000 meters high. That's the highest mountain in South America. So we get up to a whole bunch of fun stuff, and we produce eight episodes of that a Mm. year. And if I'm correct, you started your TV um, uh, presenting and production with motorcycle rides. Is that right? It's true, actually. So if you want to go way back, I actually uh, I moved to China right after university and I worked for the New York Times, Time Magazine, Newsweek, Forbes, Fortune, all these kind of formerly prestigious uh, publications. And I covered China for them as a photographer and a writer. And then I moved into television production after, you know, the kind of the collapse of the publishing industry. Sure. And yeah, my first television show, I rode a, a motorcycle all the way around China. I set a Guinness World Record. It was 65 days, 19,000 kilometers, and we called it <laughs> Tough Rides China. And it was a six-part TV show uh, originally on Travel Channel. Yeah, okay. Pretty, pretty epic, that, that distance, and uh, as you said. So um, China, the focus of uh, COVID, of course, and we'll be looking at what you perceive to be the future of the travel industry going forward later on in this uh, chat. Um, also, I want to find out at some point, once we start traveling again, the first place you're going to be heading off to uh, and why. But uh, at the moment, you're holed up in Istanbul. How's this come about? Well, I was in Dubai, and um, obviously, you know, as the COVID-19 situation kind of began unfolding in January, I think a lot of people, including myself, were maybe quite naive, thinking that it would maybe be contained inside China uh, and maybe, you know, a wider Asian region because there were, you know, there were issues in China, South Korea, Hong Kong. And such. So I kind of just continued working as normal. And we, you know, my team and I, we were in Myanmar for two weeks filming. Uh, and then in early March, we, we went out to Ethiopia to do an episode. And kind of in between March 10th and March 20th, uh, the world completely changed. So on like March 10th, you know, every country was still open. Uh, airlines were still flying. Uh, everything seemed pretty good. And then once we got onto the ground in Ethiopia, Um, You know, Italy closed its borders. And then a few days later, the United States uh, blocked all traffic uh, to and from Europe. And then Europe closed its borders. And then on March 19th, uh, the UAE closed its borders. And then when the UAE closed its borders, I was still filming in Ethiopia. And that's when we kind of canceled our production because I always had hoped I'd be able to come back to Dubai because that's Mm. where I'm a resident, where my apartment is. And as we were leaving Ethiopia, you know, we really didn't want to get stuck in Ethiopia. So I was looking for countries uh, to travel to. I didn't want to have to go all the way back to Canada. So uh, Turkey was still open. So I flew from Addis Ababa to uh, Istanbul, which is where I am now. Mm. Well, I'm holed up in the adventure center of UAE in Russell Kamer, but unfortunately, Jebel Jays and places like that out of bands, of course. So what should you have been doing at this point in time? What assignment would you have been working on? Uh, well, actually, if you want to go way back, I, I should be filming in Saudi Arabia right now. Um, like like a lot of people in the Middle East, uh, you know, we've been able to generate a lot of uh, interest in our adventure television production work in Saudi Arabia. And I had a few productions that were going to go 
into, uh, you know, we, were sh- we should be filming in Saudi Arabia for the next few months, actually, and it all kind of got postponed. So we went back to doing my Extreme Treks work, which is always stuff that we fit in around other other productions. Right. And, uh, yeah, so I should be actually, if you want to go back a few months, right now I should be in April would have been, uh, we would have been in Azerbaijan right now. Okay. Some very interesting destination. Of course, you were in uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia a little while ago, I suppose, doing a bit of a recce because you posted some uh, some great photographs of parts of Saudi Arabia, which are now coming to the forefront with uh, their, their drive to open up the kingdom. And what unfortunate timing for Saudi Arabia with putting so much effort and getting off to a great start. A really great start. And, you know, I... I uh I really wanted to to do some work in Saudi Arabia, and, and as you know, like a lot about what my television shows, you know, consist of is kind of breaking down stereotypes and really mm. understanding the people that live within the country, not just the government's perception of what that country is internationally. And Saudi Arabia interests me on a lot of levels. So in January, I took a road trip all the way around Saudi Arabia. I just showed up in Riyadh and I rented a car, and I drove kind of six, seven thousand kilometers all around the country just to check it out, just to see what kind of possibilities there were for storytelling and really fell in love with the people in the place and uh, really was hoping to be able to go back and film you know this this spring and summer but it's looking like it might be q4 or even q1 next year sure so staying with uh, saudi arabia for the moment i mean you did the recce looking for possible stories and tell the story of uh, as you say away from the government uh, uh, perception or focus what caught your imagination what, 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 what do you want to go back there and sort of portray to us people who are not familiar with uh, saudi arabia well, I think you know any country I visit, it's always about you know the people, the landscape, and and the culture, and and you know like am I meeting really wonderful people on a daily basis? Like people at the gas stations, truck drivers, mm. you know people at the restaurants I'm visiting, um, people in the hotels. Like are these people truly warm and welcoming and curious? And they were, and and that kind of you know launched me into this idea that you can pretty much just travel around Saudi Arabia and stop and chat with anyone. And uh, and the landscape is just stunning. You know, the mountains, mm-hmm. obviously the uh, the expanded desert regions, but just the diversity of landscapes and the magic of the northwest, that uh, northwest corner along the border with Jordan, which is going to be part of this new Neom project, was sure. quite exciting. Sure. And then coming down the coast along the Red Sea to Jeddah was magical. And then the Asir Mountains south of Jeddah along the border with Yemen are, are just otherworldly. So once again, like my stereotype of what Saudi Arabia was completely broken <laughs> in my in my 10 day tr- in my 10 day car driving trip uh, without my you know film crew and without really um, getting into it so so right away I was I was hooked and that was you know a place that I wanted to get into and start uh, filming Ryan let's take a little break here fascinating stuff so far and uh, come back in a moment and I want to uh, pick up from where you mentioned a little while before Myanmar so we'll do that in uh, in our next part travel wise with Phil Blizzard News, views, and interviews. We're talking with Ryan Pyle, and uh, we're looking, we'll be moving from Saudi Arabia now to Myanmar, which is one of my destinations uh, on my current bucket list. I did go, Ryan, I did go there many, many years ago. I was working in Bangkok and uh, sort of sneaked across the, the, the river into uh, Myanmar, Burma at the time it was actually, it was that long time ago, uh, unofficially, and it was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. But I want to go back there. Access is a lot easier now with uh, for people in the UAE because Fly Dubai were and will be running a service uh, to uh, Myanmar uh, en route down to Krabi in Thailand. So, uh, what can we expect from your filming in Myanmar then? Well, Myanmar was a really wonderful episode, and obviously we went into it not really knowing what we'd see on the ground. And we flew into Mandalay, uh, which was great, and then headed down to Bagan, which is just this beautiful and ancient you know, city that's full of thousands and thousands of, of historical ruins of temples and monasteries, uh, all in kind of a Buddhist tradition. And, and we did the, the famous thing there where you fly the hot air balloons over the temples at sunrise, and that was quite spectacular. And then from there, you know, and that's kind of what we do uh, at the beginning of every episode is we have a launch city where we kind of explore some of the history and some of the culture and some people. And then we head out into the mountains and do a trek. So we did about a an 80 or 90 kilometer trek through the Chin Hills, which is in Chin State, which is about uh, 200 kilometers kind of northwest of where Bagan is. Okay. Uh, and uh, and it was wonderful. We went village to village. We slept on the floors of local people's homes. We learned how the people in that you know part of the world eat and live and take care of their young and 
and uh, and just kind of uh, enjoy the beautiful landscapes uh, of the Chin Hills and the Myanmar people. And of course, the the famous thing in the Chin Hills is is these um, ritualistic face tattoos that a lot of the women have, and that's what kind of um, the region is known for. And obviously, we were able to to visit with a lot of the older women that still um, that are still alive that that practice that had practiced this when they were younger. These days, it's it's much more uh, rare to find, but um, it was so- beautiful. We with those older ladies, I mean, describe briefly what the the, the facial uh, painting, the artwork is like. Oh, I mean, it, it covers their entire face. I mean, wow. uh, and there's there's hundreds of different variations of of symbols and and decorations, and each one kind of represents their local tribe or their local village mm-hmm. or community. And a lot of them had to do it, uh, do that kind of uh, face tattooing before marriage. Um, and uh, it's wild, and and you'll rarely find women under the age of like sixty that have it. So it's quite uh, it's quite rare, and obviously sure, it's a, sure. a tradition that's dying oh, away. Dying away, yeah. I mean, talking to you now at the moment is getting it's quite quite painful, I should say, because wanderlust is kicking in, and uh, we're locked down. You're locked down. The whole world is basically locked down. So. Um, uh, I mean, looking ahead, it's hard for you from uh, a personal point of view, traveling around and also with your production team to look at where or what you're going to be tackling next because we don't know, do we? So what do you hope to be doing as soon as you can get started? Uh, I'd really hope to be, you know, going back to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, that's still a part of the world I'm, I'm quite keen on. And, and uh, you know, I still have productions on the books. We're supposed to be doing a big production in Switzerland this summer, uh, followed by Poland, uh, Azerbaijan. We move to July or August, depending on how this all plays out. So whenever this ends, mm-hmm. and I don't know what the end is. I mean, yeah, is the yeah. end, is the end no, no new cases? Is the end a vaccine? Uh, is the end all of us having, you know, our passport, which says our country, and then some other passport, which says we've been vaccinated okay. for these certain diseases, there are viruses that now we can travel. Like I have really, I'm quite afraid that maybe we have reached peak globalization and the future of travel is going to be much less free and a little bit more difficult. And that's a, a huge worry for me personally. Absolutely. Likewise as well. There could be massive, as you say, massive restrictions on, on travel in the future. Let's hope not. Um, so at the moment, what are you actually working on? Are you doing sort of post-production for um, series coming up, episodes of series? So actually all my post-production is done. We did 10 episodes for Discovery Channel last year on a new series called Expedition Asia, which was amazing, and we delivered all that. And right now, yeah, I'm just trying to plan for whatever's next, but obviously it's impossible to know, like sure. whether it's going to be Q2 or Q4 mm-hmm. or Q1 2021. It's, it's just... Uh, yeah, it's hard to keep the mind busy when you don't know when you're going to be able to hit the ground running. Absolutely. So just going back to Expedition Asia, when's that likely to be aired on Discovery Channel? That'll be out in May 2020, so next month at some time. We're, I'm still waiting for exact dates, mm-hmm. and then we'll start promoting that. Something and, for us to look uh, forward to, yeah. Something to look forward to, something uh, something that was filmed during happier times. Yeah, yeah, okay. And a couple of things to finish off. If we look back over what you've achieved so far and the place you've been to, what's been perhaps the most challenging uh, TV production you've been involved in, location-wise? and uh, Definitely any time you go up into a high altitude, it's very challenging. So we did uh, we filmed at Aconcagua, which was 7,000 meters, uh, a 7,000 meter high mountain in Argentina. And uh, obviously filming up at minus 30 degrees Celsius, minus 40 degrees Celsius uh, was very, very challenging. And obviously the safety element for you and your crew is is uh, paramount. And so that led to a lot of, you know, logistical issues, but we managed to pull through. And, and I think one of the most exciting places I filmed in and one of the places I'm kind of most proud of where we filmed was uh, Papua New Guinea. So we did the Kokoda Trail. We did the 110 kilometer Kokoda Trail through um, southern Papua New Guinea wow. uh, a couple years ago for extreme treks on BBC Earth. And that was just incredible because we had to hire about 20 local Papua New Guinean uh, porters to carry all of our filming equipment through the jungle, through the rainforest. And of course, the camaraderie over the eight or 10 day trip with all the local guys um, was beautiful and they were all smiles every day and and that's a very, very hard terrain Mm -hmm. uh, to cover. And obviously that's where the Kokoda Trail is the famous uh, trail where the Japanese and Australians fought during World War II. And that's a fabulous aspect of what you're doing, the camaraderie when you bring on board uh, local people to help you get that production up and running and uh, for completion. 
Oh, yeah, that's the best part. I mean, you know, there's the story that happens on camera, and, and then there's the behind the scenes sure. and just the, the laughs and the smiles and the high fives and the hugs at the end. And uh, we were all kind of in tears by the end of it because it was such an emotional journey. Mm, sad aspect. Bittersweet. Um, to finish off, I'm asking everyone I'm, I'm talking to these days, um, once we can start traveling again, name the destination you most want to visit, not necessarily for work, but yourself, it can be work, whatever, and why you want to go there. So um, one of the places that I, I, I've got on the books for filming is uh, Switzerland, and I'm supposed to be walking all the way across Switzerland from uh, east to west. So I'm going to be walking from kind of the borders with Austria all the way to Lake Geneva, and uh, that's about 400 kilometers, and it's okay. on a trail called the Via Alpina. And I'm absolutely looking forward to this because I haven't seen enough of Switzerland, and it's such a beautiful place for trekking and hiking, and I hope I can still execute this in June, but it is looking... Uh, increasingly unlikely we might have to push it till mm. the fall or maybe next year yeah um great destination I remember going up young Frau, which is uh what the highest mountain in in europe um, one christmas day many years ago that was a fascinating oh, beautiful uh, trek up and uh, yeah beautiful vista um right well what an adventurer and it's been quite an adventure having you on the the program today so ryan thank you very much indeed for joining us thank you for having me Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews. And a big thank you to my very special guest, Ryan Pyle. Now, in future editions of Travel Wise, when it comes to interviews, we can expect to hear from Samira Isaac, who's the CEO of the Global Tourism Forum. And also in uh, forthcoming weeks, we'll be talking to Ross Vetch, who's the CEO and co founder of WeGo, the online travel marketplace. And in our next edition of Travel Wise, with me, Phil Blizzard, from Dubai, we'll be taking a look at the latest news from across the region and beyond when it comes to travel. Okay, so uh, stay safe. Look forward to joining you soon on Travel Wise with me, Phil Blizzard. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews.